Okay, guys, let's uh, let's go through the progression on our setups. Uh, this is uh, this week's trading. We'll go over today's trades also. Uh, we're going to have a, a conference call tomorrow at uh, 8.15 uh, to 8.45 um, uh, tomorrow morning on the uh, strategies. So um, we're going to go over that tomorrow at 8.15 to 8.45 and record it. Let's go over the progression on uh, our setups. We know we have four setups in the trade room. Um, we have the three trend trades, and then we have one counter trend trade. So we have uh, three motive waves, which are with trend, one corrective wave against trend. And I want to go through the progression because uh, we've been getting these this similar um, setups that happen on a daily basis. I want to go through an entire trading session uh, and, and show you the rhythm of this thing, of these setups. So this is the S&P uh, this week. And um, we'll go over yesterday and today's a little bit. And um, well, I'll show you the rhythm of it. First of all, we have, um, we, we have these, uh, the key to getting these four setups right. Uh, we have three trend setups and one uh, against trend. So trend meaning we are with the overall um, zone. So if we have zones that are green, we're looking to buy zones that are red we're looking to sell so when we're looking for trend setups uh, very basic I'll just go over it again we have several videos now that um, go over this setup we have four or five videos in a row now to go over these three trend setup first wave I'll go over this really quick so we look at price action day we got the FZR the full zone retracement slingshot trade Slingshot setup, and then we have the Momo setup, Momentum setup would be our third one. And then those are our three trend trades. So that's with zone trend. That's Momentum, Momo, or I call it Momentum trade. So those are your three trend. That's with trend, overall trend direction. So that's with zone trend. So zones are green. You're looking for those three setups. So these are trend setups with zone trend. I'll just put zone trend. So green, we're looking for those setups. Red, we're looking for those setups in the direction of, if it's green zones, we're looking for a first wave, SDR slingshot, and a Momo. And then the a failed slingshot, we have a corrective wave or a against zone or a counter. And that is a failure trade. That's our fourth setup in the room. And this is a failure setup, which I'm nicknaming a Babe Ruth because a Babe Ruth trade. A group love to hit home runs, and that is a potential home run hitter if a failure trade comes up. So th those are our four setups. First wave, FZR, Momo, and then four is a failure. You have three that's with trend and, and one against trend or counter trend. These are motive waves. This is corrective wave. So if we – what happens with the – all a failure trade is, is a failure trade is a failed slingshot trade. And I'll go over a slingshot trade in a second. But a, a failure trade is simply you get into your zone. We have a shallow zone and a deep zone. And the shallow zone is categorized by you see these lines, these red lines and green lines. The shallow zone would be this shallow retracement. And your deeper zone would be this deeper retracement into the deeper zone. So a failure trade is categorized when you get into the zone and we have a we have these signal lines down here now what works well with these four setups is a combination of zones with these signals line signal lines down here so they work really well together and this is how the strategy is built for you guys to either use chart trader manually to get in and use an automated trail with our chart trader that ninja has or we have strategies that will allow to fire in these trades 
which I'm going to go over tomorrow from 815 to 845. But we want to use these signal lines. I have a thin signal line with a thin line, which is our seven signal line, and a thicker signal line, which is our 21. And a slingshot requires you to get into the zone. You can't be away from the zone. You got to get into the zone, a full zone retracement, meaning you're getting a full retracement into the zone. And you want this oscillator to get above this 80 threshold to get into a rubber band snapback. And then you want to come back down through this, this bull zone down here. You want to break the bull zone because what you don't want to do, you don't want this thin oscillator to come down, touch our 40 bull zone and bounce and come straight up. Or what's going to happen is you're going to get, you're going to get a, failure trade or you're going to get a um, or you're going to get um, not even pulled into the to the slingshot so slingshots over here you know you want you want the oscillator to get below 20 and to get up through this 65 80 threshold which is the bear zone you want to punch through that bear zone to get a push up you want to come down through 20 and come back up through the bear zone of 6580 to get that push up. So you can see how a slingshot works. Well, a failure is where you get, you come up to the zone, right? And these are called Babe Ruth trades, I call them, I nickname them, because they, they're, they really could be home run hits. Um, because these typically start a hard trend. Now, there's one thing that you have to have you have to have this I put this in the PDFs and over the last four or five videos we've done you got to have this large oscillator it has to go through my 65 bear zone threshold there's 65 here's 40 this is key you have to get through 65 if you're not above 65 it's not going to be a failure trade for buys vice versa if you're not below 40 on this larger signal line you're not going to have a failure trade. Consequently, the thin signal line, which is a 7, cannot be pulled in. You can't pull into a slingshot. So we're into the zone looking for a slingshot. It can't get below 40, 40 or 80. More importantly, 80, right? So you, there's, that's two characteristics that has to happen for a failure trade. So if you see yourself coming up to a zone and the large oscillator is above 65, and you're getting a double dojis or you're getting a red reversal uh, Rinko and you go right back to green Rinko reversal and this oscillator did not pull you in a thin oscillator below for a slingshot below your 40 80 uh, 20 threshold then you got yourself a failure trade that's the start of a maybe a possible huge trend so what happens is is you start moving up then this is your entry at this level that is your entry and once it gets rolling, that first trend change, these work really well together. If you come from a failure, you have a very, very high probability trade. That first wave, and this is a first wave slingshot combo, is going to be a real nice trade. So we see this a lot. We see this going from a failure and then this first wave. So you have two shots at it right away. You got your if you miss the failure trade. Yeah, first wave typically is going to be a big one. So obviously this is a big move. This is a big move here also, 44, 44 up to 96. And we we're talking around almost, what, 50, 50 uh, S&P points. And so then you come and you get a trend change, red to green. That's our first zone trend setup. So here's our, our counter setup was a failure. The Bay Bruce started it, got into the zone. Large oscillator got above 65. It must get above 65. The small oscillator did not break through our bear zone. So that told us it's a failure trade on a bar reversal from a double doge, which I call a tweezer or a reversal bar. That starts the trend. Then we go from red to green. Now we're into zone trend only. You got three setups. That first wave, when you first get red Rinko bars start printing, the first green wave up. This is actually a three combo, is a first wave slingshot and a Momo. I should have put Momo in there because it did not get into the zone. 
but uh, really it's a sling it's a it's a you had a slingshot where you got below and up through it's actually a combo of three of them together but then it starts moving and then we get another slingshot and then another momo but the, the failure starts it that's what starts the whole thing and we had one um, here yesterday morning also and I'm going to show you where that started at right here so yesterday and this is a trade that I fired into yesterday morning right there is a failure trade now why is this a failure trade and like I said after a failure trade your first wave are typically really good trades why is that a failure trade yesterday that we had because remember a failure is against zone trend they're easy to spot because you're into the zone. You're into that deeper zone area. And I love when they get into this deeper zone. That gives you a big heads up. Because you can't have a momentum trade when you get into the zone at all. If you touch a zone, there's no momentum at all. you got to be away from, you're looking for momentum trades away from the zone. Um, you are looking for a slingshot here, right? You're looking for this small oscillator to get above 80, which it did, and get back below this 40-20. Well, what happened was we get into the deep zone and what's two characteristics that, that has to happen for a failure trade? You gotta have your large oscillator above 65, which it was coming into the zone. That doesn't mean it can't still do a slingshot. So you gotta really watch that thin oscillator. That thin oscillator's gotta come all the way down through 40, down through 80. Well, it starts reversing red Rinkos, but look at your small oscillator. It stops above my bull line of 40, my, my bull zone, 40.80, stop right at 40, which is very bullish, and I got a green bar reversal, okay? So this was your long side setup on the failure trade because your large oscillator is above 65, small oscillator stayed above the bull threshold. So that started the move. But what you're going to find, let's say that you, you, you're not used to watching failure trades. Now, a lot of you are really good at spotting this now in all these markets. I get a lot of you guys sending me charts. Good job. I know a lot of you don't trade the S&P that watch these videos. So this works on all markets. That's a failure trade. But the great thing about it is you go right into a first wave. This is a first wave slingshot. And like I said, if you miss that failure trade, that first wave slingshots are very high probability moves because it already confirmed that this was not a slingshot. It's a failed slingshot. It goes into a first wave trade because you go from green to red, red to green. The first retracement is typically the best. Now, this one really lined up yesterday really good on both of them. You had two really big shots at the market. You had a shot there at 40, 14 and three quarters, highest 30 and three quarters, 15 S&P point potential. But then this one really set it up. So it got up here into my order block. Here's a new order block. Stop price came down to my fresh order. These fresh order blocks are very key. They can stop price all by themselves. There's a fresh order block started. There's a fresh order block that started. The great thing about this order block when it came up, it formed right when we had this big surge in price. So what they did is they retested the order block. I love these order blocks as confirmation with these zones on slingshots, FZR trades. They work really, really well for targets and slingshot trades. It comes right down to it, touches it, I almost bleed to the tick on it, and then we get the slingshot trade where yeah, that's your first wave, you get red Rico bars, you're coming down into the zone, look at your small oscillator, it goes below 20, comes up through this bear zone, a minimum threshold of 65, that is your go right there to get into the slingshot trade, and that was the first wave. So this combo works really well. Everybody knows I love the, I love the um, FZR into the Momo because that's a nice combo too. But what I'm finding, the more that these failures come up, this combo is even getting you in earlier. The failure starts first, then to the first wave slingshot. Then my first wave slingshot goes into my Momo trade. That's a Momo because Momos cannot touch the shallow zone. Both oscillator, your large oscillator has to be above 
your 65 minimum uh, and they're both above 65 and you get this push so you see in these comp these trades come right after another so if you can get if you can start watching when these failure trades start it really starts the 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 train of setups right in a row and the one that you really have to understand if you see a failure trade you're looking for this guy right here to be your your top one and clay uh emailed me yesterday about this what's your favorite trade do you like the failure or the first trade first wave when they come together like this i like them both um i like a failure first I, that's when i got on yesterday uh, on the failure trade myself um I was already in on the first wave, so I didn't have to uh, touch that. But the first wave is, this is a really good high probability trade because the failure trade confirmed that the, the short zone is over. The long zone's in. So let's say you missed the failure trade. Don't think you missed the setups. Watch for this first wave slingshot. That's probably going to be your best trade of that session. Because that first wave starts a series of trade setups. I got another question from traders, and they go, well, what's your favorite trades of all these four trades then? And that's what I was emailing uh, Clay back yesterday also is that I love these three trades. Those are my favorite trades. Why? Because I'm getting I, – the, the failure is one that is a possible home run hitter. And once it starts moving, if it trend changes, it just confirmed that that market could potentially be a home run hit. So once it starts moving and I get that first retracement on a first wave, that is a really high probability first wave. And then the slingshots happen after one another. The ones you got to be careful with, the reason I don't mention my Momo as my, my, my top of all these three is that the MOMO is great early in the early stages of a move. Where you got to be careful about momentum trading is if you're trading off a small Renko chart. So let's say I'm trading off a small Renko and I'm into a first wave. So let's say that I'm moving up into a first wave and you can treat, you can treat the MOMO trades, the first wave trades, I'm sorry, the first wave trades on the small Renko chart like you treat the slingshots. So your entry actually would be above 80 back through this threshold of here. Here would be your entry this morning off a small Renko chart. You're letting it chop because of smaller Renko and there's your entry right there based upon momentum slingshot. But when you look at momentum is that if you wait until after a series of waves, momentum can typically get you in in lit, uh, you want to get on the early stages of momentum trades here, not up here. You know, so be very careful on momentum on trading smaller Renko charts. If you're trading a small Renko chart, the failure trade works good, and then also the first wave works good with the slingshot confirmation. For, in other words, if you're trading off a small Renko chart that's up to 113.13, be smart about it. If this is going to be a trend change, red to green, then this is a momentum, trend change first wave momentum, right? But you can actually treat the first wave with a slingshot. You can let the oscillator get fully retraced. You can let it get above 80, let it get below the 20 threshold, right? And then get right back above your bare threshold. If you do this, you're not going to get chopped out a lot on a small Renko chart. That's your long for the big giant push-up. And that swing low held really good. If you want these swing lows and swing highs to hold good on a small Renko, use your slingshot entry on even your smaller Renko chart because it's, it's going to give you more Renko bars. It's a really small Renko, 13. So watch your small oscillator. It gets below 20. It stops at my... my my 65 threshold right so it's still showing weakness comes back down through back down through 20 and then fires through my threshold then the market just explodes this morning I mean that was a nice entry when it broke through my threshold right there your entry 
25 as high as what? 41, right? So when you're doing these, you can time that trade by doing that. But here again, this is a this is a, this is a trend change momo because the oscillators are below. That's a first wave momo. But if you look at your first wave was actually here on your slingshot. It got above 80, back down through my small threshold, and you got a real nice trade when it broke the threshold right around 4103, and it got as low as what 96. So you know we're talking about seven S and P points just there by by using my slingshot on here. Here again, this is a smaller Renko chart. So instead of just firing on these Momo trades on the first wave like this, use it as a slingshot technique where you're getting this whole up through. You're, you're getting a trend change. Let it fully retrace below 20 and get through my 6580 threshold, and then it turns into a real nice trade. 4501 all the way up to 16, 15 S&P points. Where traders tend to get confused on a first wave is they're not using this confirmation oscillator in here. They're getting stopped out below that swing low. So if you're using a very small Rinko chart, now you don't, you don't have a problem like this on the 20 first waves, 120, 20, it's a longer Rinko. But here you're using the oscillator to get below, then push through on your first waves. So that will help you here again. It, 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 it gets you down through and up through. So you're, you're getting here on the push up. So that helps traders out a lot on small Renko sizes to use that small threshold like that. Now the 20, we don't have an issue like that because the 20, you don't really get chopped up a lot, you know, because it's a, it's a, it's a larger Renko size and you're good to go. But the same thing on the 20 applies. If I'm using a slingshot technique, this is not a slingshot right there, right? This is a slingshot. Why? Because I'm getting, I have to get above 80 for the slingshot here. Then I have to get back below 20. And then I have to get back up through my 65, 80 threshold here. So your entry this morning, just this morning at 7.30, was 45.30 and you've been as high as 45.31 as an 11 S&P point move. Where this one is more of, this is not a slingshot, it didn't get snapped back all the way, it didn't get a full retracement, where this one is forming a slingshot trade right now. So you can use that technique to help you out as far as that goes. As far as a larger Renko size, I get this a lot from traders, that why do you have this large Renko? Because I have the 120.20 here, I got the 113.13. Well, why even have this over here? This is the 130.30. Because it gives you a, uh, it tells you where the failures can start, and it tells you when to look for big first waves. So if I look at this morning's price action, the failure trade started right there. And this happened, this has been happening a lot. So when I'm looking at these charts at night before price action even starts during the day, meaning I'm talking about you know, at 6 p.m. Eastern all the way to midnight Eastern, if I'm in here looking at charts, if I look at 9 p.m., 10 p.m. Eastern before midnight and we're getting rolling, you're going to see this happen a lot where these larger, larger Renko sizes start a big trend. And I've seen it happen over and over again on the 20 Renko and the 30 Renko where you'll get this to start. This starts at what, last night this started the move up in the S&P. So this is a failure trade. Why? The oscillator, you'll notice in the evening session, got above 65 threshold. And we got into the zone. Then it started reversing. That's our typical failure trade slingshot. But the thin oscillator stayed really strong. Did not get below my bare threshold of 40. Actually stayed above 65 on both. And then got the red bar reversal. I mean green bar reversal. This told you last night going into the entire session, you're probably going to have a lot of series of trades that move up. So for you, you European traders and you traders that are early morning traders, you're getting a lot of failure trades that are happening the night before on these larger Rico sizes, and it's positioning us for the hard push that in session uh, going into the next session. It's happening a lot that I've been noticing. So what, I, what you notice here on the large Rico size, again, 
is that you what's the best trade then after a failure trade if you miss it you got it right there you got a nice first wave trade and the first wave trade and that market just explodes from 31 all the way to 41 for 10 S&P points so this can start large potential moves in the market that's why I have this up it tells you if the markets any stronger weaker position like this first wave trade over here that happened yesterday at 11 o'clock the markets in a super strong position because it's above the shallow but look at your large oscillator so when I look at this large Rinko size I'm I love watching this large oscillator I love seeing the position of it it lets me know if the market is in a stronger weaker position so just like I wrote in those PDFs the the S&P has been in a strong position since when since 2.30 yesterday afternoon, it is now 8.48 in the morning, the next day. I'm in a strong position. So what does this tell me on my other small Renko charts? It's telling me take all slingshots off the 13, go above, below 20, buy, up through my minimum threshold 65, buy, take all my failure trades, take all my first wave trades. It's telling you the direction of the tone, all right? And it really lets you know. So this will let you know if you're in a stronger position. Like in here, uh, starting out at 8.15 in the morning a few days ago, you better have been long from right when it broke through that 65 threshold. Look how it stayed above 65 all the way for the first two, two, two and a half hours of trading. That should have told you take all momos. All, all the early momos, especially the slingshots. I love the slingshots. First wave trades off smaller Renko sizes. Then it got in a position where it got started cranking below 40 threshold. Then at 10, 10, 20, it said, you better take shorts from that position. And then we went into a longer position there. So it lets you know if you're in a stronger, weaker position. So the larger oscillator is still in a, large, a stronger position at this point. Right, so what we're going to look for here this morning is we're into what now? We're into a slingshot. We're not into a momentum trade because we're into the zone. We're not into a first wave. The first wave happened back here, right there. That pull-in was your first wave slingshot pull-in right there. So that started the move. Then it got into a momentum trade, and now we're into a slingshot trade. So a slingshot trade, the oscillator is below 20. It's got to cut up through this threshold of 65 to 80. If it doesn't get through this threshold of 65 to 80, the small oscillator, what's the other trade we can look for? We can look for a failure trade. But it's not saying that right now. It's saying we're looking for a slingshot right now to pull us in. Because i got strong momentum on my larger Renko size over here. My large oscillator is above 65 threshold. My zone is green. I'm looking for green push up. I'm looking for a slingshot trade right now. Right now, I'm looking for a slingshot pull in, just like back here. That happened at this level this morning at 7:30. At 30, got as high as 41, almost 11 S&P points for you. And now we're looking for a slingshot right now. My oscillator is down below 80, needs to get up through this minimum 65, 80 threshold. So, what if that doesn't happen? What if this oscillator comes up and hit its head, head, hit its head right on 65? Then I'll look for a green reversal bar. I won't pull in on the slingshot. I'll look for a green right back to red, and we'll look for a failure trade to get this market moving down. But as of right now, we are looking for a bullish slingshot trade over here on the 13 and over here on the 20. Both oscillators need to come up through the bear zone. Hasn't done it yet. Market profile suggesting we are going higher. We're above high value area. So we are outside of high value. As long as we stay above high value, we're still bullish. The only way this fails is if I get a failure trade because the oscillator is below 40. So we got a possible failure slingshot trade. These oscillators will tell me what to do.